British politics is changing. Welcome to election night here on the BBC. Not even seasoned pundits can guess who will be running the country in 2015. And we just have no idea who's going to win, who's going to end up as Prime Minister. It could be a majority Conservative government, majority Labour government, a minority government, Lib Lab or Lib Con, or maybe even Lib Lab Con, and a few UKIP thrown in as well. The UK is living under a coalition government for the first time in half a century. People last Thursday told us politicians they didn't think any party deserved an outright majority. Yet at the same time, it's obvious that we need stability. Grassroots party membership is at an all-time low. Who wants to join a political party? Hardly anyone. About 1% of the electorate is a paid-up member of one of the three main Westminster parties. And fewer and fewer of us are even bothering to vote at all. I'm sure there are some honest, good, decent politicians that do what they're supposed to do. There are some awful lot of them that do. And yet, the British people can sometimes appear more politically energised than ever before. Why is it racist to be, to be an English patriot in your own country? You can stop! You can stop! John, if you want to understand how the Yes campaign came from nowhere to frighten the life out of Westminster, just look behind me. So how are our political views changing? How do we develop these views in the first place? And most importantly, who cares? If you look at the number of people who say they don't know yet how they're going to cast their vote, you get a sense sometimes slightly that they are either confused or they are bored rigid. I mean, a lot of people say this is a crisis, but I would argue, well, it might be a crisis. It may well be, actually, that they don't have any particularly strong feelings about anything, that they're broadly satisfied with their lot. Saying that it doesn't matter if people vote or not is, in some sense, is true, because if they choose not to vote, it's their choice. But what happens is we get a society where the affluent, middle-class, well-educated vote, politics reflects their interests, and 50% of the population, say, get completely left out. The British Election Study is one of the largest election studies in the world. The British Election Study is a massive piece of work. Without it, we wouldn't really understand how democracy is functioning. Our expert this afternoon for the moment is Professor Jane Green from Manchester University, who's in charge of the British Election Study. Every single British election study that's been run to date has offered something new and exciting, and I think ours is no different in that sense. At each general election, it tries to find out what informed our decision to vote the way we did. The British election study is being run here at the University of Manchester, in full partnership with the University of Oxford and the University of Nottingham. It's a large survey, they've been following people through over four years, the same people, and then following cross-sections through at the time of the election itself gives the most remarkable insight. Even in the first year of us running this study, we've, we've put three surveys into the field. And each of those surveys has interviewed more than 30,000 people. So this is the biggest panel study, the, the way we follow the same people over time, than I think has ever been run before, certainly by the British Election Study. It's really about the design as well. I mean, we don't just make up questions and say, oh, that'll be interesting. We, we have to think about what the research hypotheses are. What do you make of uh, Mark Reckless? He's left the Conservatives and joined UKIP. Uh, the man's a flouty pelm vessel. He should be hodded into solulence, literally. A flouty pelm vessel? What's one yeah. of those? Well, it's obvious, really. If you've got good, detailed polling data on why people think something, the way the trends are going, what are the important issues, it is hugely useful in reporting any issue. The British Election Study is objective. It's not an opinion poll that has an incentive to you know, get a headline. We're trying to stand back from the noise and from all the political nature of the campaign and really provide in-depth insight and understanding into the, the very nature of the election in terms of those people who are voting. What is an election? An election is an event in which millions of people go out and cast their vote and out comes a composition of parliament. 
Politicians and media try to read something in it, and you will see on the evening of a general election, everybody claiming to know what the voters meant. Thank you very much, thank you. And they try to appropriate the meaning of that election in their own terms, without an independent, dispassionate and non-partisan check of all those claims, politicians can run away with it. David Cameron, you've been found out. A yes vote on September the 18th is a vote to remove these weapons for mass destruction from Scotland once and for all. Really what last night's about. It's about Shire England saying, we don't really get the three parties here in Westminster, the establishment. They're not speaking the same language as us. They don't understand what their policies have done to our lives. If somebody else can put a meaning in my vote or your vote or whoever else's vote that was not intended by me, then it becomes a very difficult process that doesn't have much to do anymore with accountability, with representation, and in general with what we call democracy. But given that the British public is polled more relentlessly than at any time in its history, what's so great about this one? The main difference is the breadth and depth that are being brought to the enterprise. If that's right, the Liberal Democrats, despite all that noise and fury, have actually dropped three seats which could be one reason why you need to be a bit skeptical about this exit poll. Most of the opinion polls are about generating a headline. What is the gap now between Labour and Conservatives or where is UKIP in the polls, etc. The questionnaires that are being used in those polls are thin, if you want to call that. We just have a few questions. It's cheap, it's quick and all of that. But also, it gives us very little to work on. What we do is we might spend 20, 25, 30 minutes asking people deep questions about how they think the economy is doing, what they think of political leaders, how they feel about politics. Using those kinds of data, we're able to explain the very basis of how people vote and also, if they don't vote, why they don't vote. A big application of this is that we learn what the public understands about itself. It used to be in the 1920s, social science, they didn't do random samples and so they just, they had a really weird view of what the public was. No human interacts with a random sample of other humans. You think the whole world is your friends. If you do a random sample and you talk to a random sample of 10 people, you'd be super surprised. There is a lot of public presumptions that left and right mean less and less in the political process. The parties are becoming more and more alike over time. The left and the right are kind of ideological archetypes. They are, they are like, like boats um, filled with political content. And this content is changing all the time. The context in which people live affects the way they think. So even if I'm a, a member of the Labour Party, if I'm living around a lot of conservatives, that can affect um, my politics above and beyond my own personal beliefs. We want to know the surroundings, the context in which people are sort of embedded within politics, and how that is going to affect also both their beliefs, their attitudes, and their actions. Certainly, I think the 2015 general election is going to be probably the most unpredictable in my adult lifetime, going back to the, the late 70s. The combinations of the possible outcomes uh, are just so many. There are fewer and fewer people who identify with a political party, fewer and fewer people who see meaningful ideological differences between the major political parties, made far the worse, if you look at it that way, by the coalition. And fewer and fewer people in this particular election who think that either of the major parties can really deliver and is really going to make a difference. If you want to understand people's disengagement in, the t in terms of whether or not they're likely to vote in elections, you really have to think about what an election is doing. What, it's basically asking you to choose one representative over another. And if, that, if those representatives are essentially offering the same thing, then it's hardly surprising that people will decline to make a choice. If the British election study doesn't understand the fragmentation of our party system, then we've missed the most important question in 2015. Collecting data for one of the largest election studies in the world is not without its challenges. There is a lot more polling around. Uh, I mean, you've got YouGov who are doing polls every single day. Uh, when I started in this business 35 years ago, there'd be an opinion poll, well, maybe once a month, 
Um, now they're all over the place, and a lot of them you don't even have time to look at. It's an issue that's been plaguing public opinion polling and, and election studies for years, partly because it's abused so much by the commercial world. People are being bombarded by people saying, do this survey, do that. And they pretend they're serious, and then they start putting in loads of questions about their consumer behavior. And we have to actually have a way of saying, look, this is actually a serious survey, and you can be heard. While the study has always been invaluable to journalists, scholars, and civil servants, the 2015 version is aimed at everyone. The British Election Study Data Playground seeks to democratize access to unprecedented amounts of information, previously only available to experts. We are allowing anybody the chance to understand this election for themselves. Anybody, Joe Public, can come along, go online and create a table of, say, what somebody voted for in 2010 by what they intend to vote for in 2015, just at the click of a mouse. In my ideal world, all political scientists would be using the British Election Study. I would like to see political parties using it to inform themselves about voters. I'd like to see journalists using it. I'd like to see students using it. I'd like to see school kids using it to get a feel for what you can do with data. So, everyone really. We can see through the Scottish referendum that when something's at stake, when people's passions are high, when there's a clear and meaningful choice, then people will turn out to vote and people will get incredibly engaged with their political system. People can engage passionately with politics. And the fact that they're not engaging passionately with elections in Westminster really tells us more about Westminster than it does about people.